Welcome to Channel 18 News. I'm Jim Rogers. Child Protective Services began an investigation after Jessica Elizabeth Bender, age 27, of Sulphur Springs, and her year-old child tested positive for methamphetamine. Special Crimes Unit was contacted and began an investigation as well. Special Crimes Unit obtained an arrest warrant for Bender. Bender is in Hopkins County Jail, charged with abandoned and danger a child, a state jail felony. She's being held on a $25,000 bond. When Silver Springs Police stopped Carrie Olin Kirkpatrick, age 56, of Silver Springs for failing to stop at a designated location, Kirkpatrick was identified and found wanted on Gregg County and Kaufman County warrants. Also in his possession was contraband believed to be methamphetamine. Kirkpatrick is in Hopkins County Jail, charged with possession of a controlled substance penalty group 1, more than 1 gram but less than 4 grams, bond forfeiture, fraud, use, possession, identifying information, accident involving damage, that was from Gregg County, and possession of a controlled substance penalty group 1, less than 1 gram, that was the Kaufman County warrant. A Hopkins County grand jury handed up 43 indictments late Tuesday afternoon. The names of the 32 who have been arrested and charged have been released. They're posted on kssdradio.com. Among those indicted, Jeremy Kenyon Gibson, indicted for aggravated assault, date, family, home with weapon, and for tampering fabricate evidence with intent to impair. Hopkins County deputies responded to a disturbance on County Road 2437 where Gibson, age 26 of Dallas, had brandished a firearm and had discharged it. John Ralph Stark was indicted for assault family house member impede breath circulation. Officers at the scene of an assault reported Stark's wife showed signs of assault that included choking and restricting her airway until she blacked out. The victim's injuries were visible. Stark was apprehended at a different location, westbound on Houston Street, as opposed to the North Davis Street residence. Alvin Virgil Ward III was indicted for injury child elderly disabled with intent. Michael Shane McCormick was indicted for burglary of a habitation, and as we said, the others may be found on kssdradio.com. ICE, Immigration Customs Enforcement, raided the load trail facility in Sumner, Texas, near Paris Tuesday. Over 160 individuals were detained. According to reports, more than 100 people were detained, suspected of using fraudulent identification. The Sumner Load Trail Facility rated manufacture small trailers and is a separate manufacturing line than the 53 feet dump trailers that will be built in Sulphur Springs at a facility currently under construction. According to the Sulphur Springs Hopkins County EDC, the local facility under construction is a separate entity within the parent load trail company. Construction work at the local facility continues as of Wednesday morning. Load trail has faced penalties in the past for hiring undocumented workers. The company has paid just under one half million dollars in fines for hiring undocumented workers. Load trail is known worldwide for the manufacture of trailers and dump trailers. It's considered one of the fastest growing companies in manufacturing trailers. The company being built in Sulphur Springs is being built in Heritage Business Park off Loop 301 near Raven Industries and Amarok Polymer Concrete. The local facility will house a, a 150,000 square feet building and new jobs at the facility will total 150 once production is in full swing. John and Deborah Gillis announced Tuesday the largest private educational initiative ever undertaken in Hopkins County with the formation of the John and Deborah Gillis Foundation, which will provide scholarships for students and grants for school district. The John and Deborah Gillis Foundation will provide 10 annual Bright Star scholarships to seniors graduating from any of the seven high schools in Silver Springs beginning in the spring of 2019. Scholarships will be in the amount of $4,000 per semester and will be renewable up to eight semesters, making it the largest scholarship program in the county. In addition, a total of $100,000 in grants over a three-year period will be awarded annually to qualifying schools to support instructional programs, staff development, and other initiatives that align with the Foundation's mission. KSST Channel 18 News was present Tuesday at Silver Springs Country Club when the announcement was made.
The Bright Stars Scholarship Program, John and, and Debbie have generously given to where we're going to, starting um, in the spring, and we, we've got some dates here that you can see. Um, and it's only my job to facilitate the process and the logistics of this, but um, we want to award 10 Hopkins County students with $4,000 a semester scholarships for up to a semester, so $30,000. We basically want kids that have shown some initiative and are college ready. So all we're asking for is a B average. Whatever your grade point average score is, we'll work with you on that. But we need kids that have shown some initiative, but they don't have to be the top 10 or the brightest of the bright. The second thing is an 80% attendance rate over the first seven semesters. Again, we want these kids, if we're going to give them this much money, we need to know that they have shown some initiative um, in, in getting there. Um, the third thing, and I, I love this about Johnny and Debbie's heart, is that they want kids that might not otherwise go on to their post-secondary dreams to have an opportunity. So we're going to be using the federal guidelines for um, levels of low socioeconomic. Now we're going to be we're going to work with the families, but their dream is to help kids to go on to school that might not otherwise be able to go on to school. So that the families, what we really urge schools to do is to help those kids to fill out that fast form in the fall. Um, and if, you, if you're not familiar with that, we can help you with that. But that's the federal guidelines for um, students that's showing need that goes to colleges. And we'll use the same process. Um, so we can, if you're not familiar with that, or we can work with your counselors on that, that will use federal guidelines for that because they're, it's the best. We can't improve on that really. So once they um, submit an application and I kind of bet that they meet those basic criteria for eligibility. Then we're going to ask the kids to write an essay. We're going to ask the kids to have three letters of recommendation by an adult that they know that can be submitted to us. And if you look in the back of that packet, we want to be very, very transparent because we want this to be Transparency is really important for us. We don't want anyone to ever think that, that this can become political. In small communities, that can happen. So there is going to be a rubric that they're going to be graded on. Um, and we're, we're, we'll talk about that process in a moment. But I, I did want you to see that. So they're going to write an essay. And they'll be graded on that based on the rubric. We're going to have three letters of recommendation submitted. We'll have a rubric for that. But I will tell you, I think where it's really going to be telling is that they're going to come in for an interview. And what we're going to put together is an invite, a Bright Stars Scholarship Advisory Committee. And it will be through. We're going to have five people on that committee from the county. And the reason for five, only three of the advisory committee members will score using the rubric. But I wanted five to choose from in case it was a conflict of interest, somebody knows someone. We want to make this as transparent and as non-biased as possible. And so they will go through the process, and then we will take the top 10 from there and work. And uh, the, the last thing that I can say about that piece is we're not going to write checks directly to the student. We're going to work with the higher ed and set up accounts, so the money will go from the foundation to the higher ed, whether it's Harris Junior College, Northeast Texas Community College, a and Commerce, where Tyler, wherever they choose to go, we'll work with that institution to 
to set up an account that will put that $4,000 a semester in for books, schools. You know, maybe they're going to a cosmetology school. Maybe they're going to wherever they choose to go. There's so many options now um, that will set it up with that institution uh, that way. Um, the board is nominating 12 members, again, for transparency. The board is nominating 12 names. They will come to consensus on the five, and we'll ask those five to serve a two-year time commitment to serve on this committee um, to, to vet and to use these rubrics for these scholarships. If your counselors would like me to come out and sit with them, I'm a former high school counselor, so I get that. There's so much to know and be able to do. I couldn't decide what I wanted to be when I grew up, so I was a teacher for a while, then I was a counselor for a while, then I was a principal for a while, then I was in a district. But it's, I know now the Lord had me go in different places because he knew where I was going to wind up. Um, so we'll come and sit with the schools. I would love to come out and talk to the junior and senior classes and say, here's your opportunities, your freshmen, your sophomores, and say, kids, be thinking about these things because here's what you need to do to be eligible for these scholarships. I'm Johnny Gillis. And what are you trying to do here today? Well, just trying to help the students in Poplars County. Uh, it's very difficult to trek out of high school and college these days. The price of uh, college has gone up by 5.5% since I transferred from high school to college back in 1984. So it's very difficult for a student to be able to afford to go to college nowadays. So what are you trying to do about that? Well, we are uh, committing uh, eight scholar uh, ten scholarships a year, up to four thousand uh, four thousand dollars per student per semester, and so that's about what it costs to go to Texas A&M Commerce, and so that's uh, four years that will uh, eight semesters, and so we we hope that that ten students will grow over the, over time, but we can start to do you think you got your message across to the educators today? I hope so. I think Robin did. I'm not a very good communicator, but Robin uh, is excellent. She's our executive director. Here's Don Julian with sports. First in news, the Wildcats marching band is a big part of any Wildcats football game, and the band will be hitting the field for the first time this season during the Wildcats and Frisco Wakeland football game Friday night at Frisco Memorial Stadium. New Wildcats band director Spencer Emmert says it will be an exciting time for band students, especially for the freshmen who have never performed before on Friday night. Emmert recalls his first Friday night performance as a freshman with the Quitman High School band back in 1994. He says that band did an Aaron Copeland show that included Hoedown, that's the beef, it's what's for dinner song, and they also did Appalachian Spring. Emmert says he was the only snare drum performer in that band. He said tapping the band on and off the field were very big moments for a freshman. Emmert says the Wildcats marching band is ahead of schedule and will be marching and playing their entire first number of their electronic music show at halftime. They will also march and play quite a bit of their second number. Then at some point they will stand and play the end of the tune. The band will also be playing in the stands during the game. Emmert says uh, during the band's performance at the first home game at Prim Stadium on September 7th, the band will be adding props and perhaps even a grid that will go on top of the Prim field. In sports, it was a disappointing night for the number 13 ranked Lady Cats volleyball team as they lost at home to Paris 3-1 to Tuesday evening. After winning the first set, the Lady Cats dropped three straight sets. After the match, Lady Cats volleyball coach Justin Manus gave his assessment of the match. Uh, you know, just we came out flat. Paris High played lights out. I mean, they played very good defense. It was hard to put a ball down against them. Uh, you know, I didn't think our, our, our defense was where we needed it to be. We did not pass the ball well out of serve-receive. 
uh, we needed to bring the ball off the net, and we put it on the net way too much, and we weren't able to run our offense the way we were supposed to run it. But you're going to have nights like that. Paris, I served the ball aggressively, uh, and we just couldn't uh, couldn't get a rhythm, couldn't get a rhythm on our passes. So, uh, you know, it's 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 it's, it's hard to to not lose, I guess you could say. I mean, you're gonna have those nights where the odds are stacked against you, and tonight happened to be one of those nights. And uh, I know we just, we just couldn't pull out of it. Sure didn't like the script tonight. Uh, started with Coach Hammock uh, with his team. They win the first set, lose the next two. Yeah. Coach Carrillo wins the first set, loses the next two, and then the varsity wins the first set and lose the last three. Uh, it just, it, it looked like a, every, it just, kept recycling like we'd seen the script before oh it's it, exactly it's uh i mean paris i came in ready to play tonight i yep. think i think all three teams were, were ready to rock and roll i mean they're, they're well coached uh uh you know and they're young and so i, I think they have a, a bright future ahead of them uh you know i, I couldn't say if we played them again how it finished but I, I think that we would we would be know what to expect mm -hmm. is the thing and so uh in a way maybe we needed that you know yep. we needed that little wake-up call uh we need to give ourselves just a little bit of rest, you know, but everybody's been playing a lot. Paris, Paris High has played a lot. We've played a lot. So, <clears throat> you know, we just have to recoup. We got to get our minds right, get mentally ready and be ready to go Friday. Boy, you sound like you've got that coach's voice. I know you were urging them on as yeah. best you could, but sometimes, you know, it's just you, you know, you try and try and it just, the results just don't always work yeah, out. You know, it's just, you just have those nights and tonight's was one of those. If, if, if I can do anything extra to, get us a few points here and there, I'm going to do it, you know, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the key thing is, you know, in volleyball, it's, you got to go hard, but you got to stay calm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if, if a coach loses their head at the wrong time, your team, they can lose their head at the wrong time. So uh, you have to have that fine line of, 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 of what you want to do and, 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 but it just didn't work out for us tonight. So. Before we think this is a shock of the century, uh, we you know, find out from talking to you that this is a very, very good Paris team that is ranked, I guess, in Class 4A. Yeah, I, I believe they're ranked uh, as of the latest TGCA uh, ranking. So they're, they're moving on up, most definitely. The Lady Cats, now 20-5 and five for the season, will be playing at Liberty Ilo Friday, beginning at 4.30 p.m. Saltillo's Siena Collins has been magnificent as a runner for the Lady Lions. Collins added to her cross-country resume with a first-place finish at the Commerce Tiger Invitational at Commerce High School last Saturday. Collins covered the 3,200-meter course in a time of 1240. The Lady Lions, coached by Colton Smith, finished ninth as a team. Other Lady Lions finishers included Reagan Spear in 24th place at 14.38, Christina Wade in 48th at 15.24, Ophelia Cabrera in 75th at 16.28, and Chandler Bain at 94th at 17.37. Coach Smith said that the Lady Lions would compete next at an Avery cross-country event on Thursday. Thanks for watching Channel 18 News. Have a great evening. District, it could be a grade level. It, it could be a teacher. I'm not saying no here. Uh, or it could be a campus. Yes.
like for you to come out and do a presentation on this same information. And we can even go into more detail and, and more stuff. This is a learning experience for all of us. I mean, literally today, we were like, with this, I haven't slept for 48 hours. <laughs> Oh, Lord. 